In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we welcome you, our listeners and viewers at home, to today's Bible study on hair. And it is our prayer that the Lord in his infinite mercy will illuminate our hearts today so that we'll be able to behold that new thing which he wants us to in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, here with me today, I have our mommy, Mrs. Olanike Oke. Mommy, you're welcome to the Bible study on here today. Thank you, mommy. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. And also I have our Father in God, our own dear Reverend Canon, Adeyemo Adeyera. Daddy, you're most welcome, sir. You, sir. May the Lord bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Before we start, I would like us to put everything into the hands of God as I invite our mommy to lead us in prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We honor you and we bless you. Father, we are here today to discuss the place of marketplace in the teaching of the word of God, the role of marketplace. My God and my Father, you will put us through in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And at the end of today's teaching, Lord, you will take absolute control. So shall be one. Those that are sick in heart shall be healed Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you. Blessed in Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Today, by the grace of God, our sub theme is marketing the gospel of Christ. Marketing the gospel of Christ. And the topic we're going to be considering today is obeying Christ's mandate, which is go he into the marketplace. Obeying Christ's mandate, go he into the marketplace. And our text is taken from the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ as recorded by St. Matthew, chapter 28. We shall read verse 19. And it says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And the aim to consider today are two. And the first one is to teach every Christian that the call to evangelize is all inclusive. And the second one is a Christian should be ready to showcase his call to holiness, even in the marketplace. That means we must be ready to, sh to showcase that which the Lord has called us into, which is call to holiness even in the marketplace. And by introduction, God has mandated us to go into the world, to all people everywhere, and make them his disciples. He has given us that assignment to go out, to go into all places, to make everyone the disciple of Christ, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and also to teach them to obey everything he has, commandment or he has commanded us. And he will be with us always to the end of the age. And that is Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, that we just read not quite long. And also, this call is all encompassing. It covers every facet of human endeavors. So it is appropriate to carry his news of teaching, teaching what God has commanded to the people in the marketplace. We have various forms of dishonesty are uh, rearing their ugly heads. The Christian call is a call to holiness and obedience to God. It is a call to love our neighbor as ourselves. It is a call to showcase that which the Lord has commanded us to, which is love, the greatest of all commandments. All these Christian attributes and values are totally lost in our marketplace today. And of course, if we look at it here and there, we will discover that things like cheating and all manners of atrocities are being perpetrated in our marketplace. And the Lord is sending us out so that we can put a change so that we can make a correction, we can make amend where necessary in our marketplace. And also, 
Instead of holiness, we have dishonesty, the use of false skills and measurements, profiting, swearing falsely on prices of what we are selling. Such as, you know, some people, when you ask them, how much is this thing? They will say, this is the amount. And when you say, ah, ah, let me buy it for so, so, so amount, they will say, ah, God sees it too. God sees me. Oh. This is the amount I bought it and it is always a lie. God sees us. So people make a kind of swearing, people swear falsely on prices of what they are selling. The word of God says, be thou holy as I am holy. And we can find that in Leviticus chapter 11 verse 45. I pray that the grace for each and every one of us to be able to make a change, to correct all these abnormalities, the Lord will release upon us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Today we have three questions to quickly study, to discuss together. And the first question goes to our mommy. Explain in your own words what it means to evangelize. What it means to evangelize. Mommy, the question goes to you. What does it mean to evangelize? To me, to evangelize is an act of preaching the gospel Mm. with the intention of sharing the message and teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. Then, by teaching the message of our Lord Jesus Christ, it will bring people, those that, those that are wandering in the world, that does not know our Lord Jesus Christ, it will bring them closer to our Lord Jesus Christ. The souls that are rotting away, by evangelizing to them, it will save their soul from eternal damnation. Thank you very much. Mommy, may the Lord bless your knowledge in the name of Jesus. Daddy, is there anything you would yes, like to add to what our mommy just said? to what our mommy has said. Mm-hmm. What, the word evangelize is an action word. Mm-hmm. And from that perspective, it's telling us that it's, a, it, it's something that demanded our action. Mm-hmm. And the action is spreading the good news the good news of the work of Christ. The work that Christ has done with respect to the redemption and salvation of human beings all over the world, what Christ has completed. So the word evangelize is demanding that everybody should rise, go, spread the good news, Telling the word of what Christ has done. And the second question is, Daddy, I would like you to answer this second question. Is evangelism limited to Christians alone? Because like you said the other time, you know, you were talking about uh, 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 the work, the work of redemption in which the Lord has done. Now, making it known to people. So this question is now asking us that, is it limited to Christians alone? Because it is like, I I want you to also know this. There is a proverb that says, it is only what you know that you will share, that you will pass on to others. So is it limited to the Christians alone? Well, uh, from different perspectives, we look at that question. One, the, the work of evangelism, is not limited to Christian alone. There are different levels of Christian in the world. There are people who are being called Christian simply because they were born into a Christian family. But in the recent of it, they are not a Christian by their ways of life. And so such will not be exempted in our heart of evangelizing. That somebody bears Christian name, that his name is David, does not mean that he's a Christian. So that in in our going out, we must not accept such people. That somebody is also going to church, that somebody is even a worker in the church, does not mean that he must not be preached to 
because evidences are around us. There are people who are regular uh, goers. And there are people who bears the name of Christian. Thank, Thank you very much. But, but I, want you to, I want you to look at it in this form, sir. Okay. The Bible also made us understand that those who are saved should rise for the salvation of others. Okay. That means those who are saved, are, are they not Christians? They are Christians. Yes. The Christians who are saved should rise up for the salvation of others. So using that to answer the question, can we now say it, it is limited or not limited to Christians alone? Okay. Well, I said... The question is of two, two is a two-edged sword. Yeah. Uh, it is limited to Christian because it is only the Christian that who knows that Christ. must go out. Okay. It is only the Christian. Those who has relationship with Christ that must go out. They are the one, the one that has been saved. Mm. They are the one that has the challenge. They are the one that has the call. That they are the one that God has given the assignment to go out. So they are safe. They must look for the salvation of others. And in another form, there are people that the uh, evangelism is not limited to Christian alone, simply because there are different kinds of people in the world. And there are even different kinds of evangelism. Uh -huh. So there are different kinds of people in the world. Uh, not only Christian. We, anyone that has not come in contact with Christ. No, what if anyone will come in contact of such, we have an assignment to reach them. So anyone that has not come in contact with Christ, that has not established a relationship with him, we have an assignment to reach him with the gospel of salvation. Thank so, evangelism is not limited to Christian alone. Thank you From very that. much. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> Mommy, what, do you, what would you like to add to what our daddy has said? <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, our moderator. This uh, question has uh, two ways in answering the question. But in the first instance, every Christian is responsible for evangelism. It's not meant for pastors alone. Mm. Because the word of God says, go ye into all nations. In this perspective, we are to go into the world and preach the gospel to just anybody. Not Christians alone. Just as uh, our Father in the Lord has said, you may be bearing David, Joshua, whatever, and you might not know Christ deeply as you're supposed to know. So, if you look at it in that angle, evangelism is not responsible, that is, Christians are not responsible for evangelism alone. It's meant for all of us. And the commission, we are commissioned mm. to go into the world to reach all nations. Thank you very much, sir. And thank you very much, Mommy. You have contributed beautifully uh, to it. And I pray that the Lord will continue to illuminate your hearts and your minds in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. Uh, dear listeners and viewers at home, perhaps you're just joining us. This is Bible study on hair. Uh, and by the grace of God, our topic today, the topic we are treating today is obeying Christ's mandate. Go ye into the marketplace. And like we have rightly said, it is our duty as Christians. The assignment has been given unto us. And if we look at it in that text, Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, is, is, is telling, is commissioned, has commissioned us as Christians. And the assignment has been given to us. So there is a command. And the command is go and do the assignment. And we are on question three. We are on question three. And I have with me the Reverend Canon Adeye Muadeyera. And also our mommy, Mrs. Olanike. Uh, okay. 
And uh, my name is uh, Reverend Peter Uluwatomiwa Allahoye. So thank you very much. Uh, Daddy, well, okay, let me direct this question to mommy. Mm, the third question is talking about the principles of teaching. The principles of teaching. Considering things that are happening in the marketplace, you know, as Christians. So the question is now saying, how can we carry the principles of teaching of the Bible to the marketplace? How can we take the principle of teaching the word of God to the marketplace? Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Thank you very much. In the first instance, as Christian, as born again Christian, child of God, we must be conscious that we are on a mission mm. in the world. There is a purpose for coming to this world. And uh, one of the major objectives is to preach the gospel. Now, also, we must let people know that we are, that we are Christians. How do they know? When people see you, after all, it's not written on your forehead that you are a Christian. Even bearing uh, Unis or Christiana mm -hmm. doesn't make you a real, uh, a real born again Christian. It's that one is just ordinary identity. But your character, our character is one of the principles. When people see you, they watch you, they watch the way you behave, the way you speak in the society, your relationship with others. These are the principles. Another one is love. Do you actually love your neighbor? These are one of the commandments of our Lord Jesus Christ. Love others as you love yourself. Are you following this principle? then we must be friendly and you must try as much as possible to encourage others in the way of the Lord. Not that you've known the way and you are, and you are not looking at those that are missing the way without showing them the way, without telling them what to do. Then apart from that, we must invest in the life of those we are preaching to. It might not be money. You show them love. You assist them. That will pave way for you to preach the gospel. You pray for them when they are in difficulties. Mm -hmm. All these things I'm trying to explain are ways by which we can invest into the life of people in the marketplace as a child of God. You, you can share tracts. At times, you know, marketplace is always noisy. Mm. So in a situation like that, you can share tracts. And when people know the type of person you are, they will respect you. They will collect the tracts from you and they will read. But if you are not honest, you are not a worthy, uh, you are not worthy to be emulate, they will just look down on you and they will just go on their own. They will not even collect. They will just thank you. They will not collect the tracts from you. You can share the story of your life. For those that are passing through similar challenges of life, tell them, I was once in your shoe. This is what Christ did in my life. Thank you very, thank you very much, yes. mommy. Amen. Oh, may the Lord help us. Oh. And that is to say that the best instructional aid is one's life. Yes. The best instructional material. You know, as a teacher, there is always an instructional, instructional material. Yes. When you go to class to teach your puppies, you know, there are aids. Like, okay, this is this, this. When they see, they'll be like, okay, yeah, I remember. So as Christians, the best instructional aid, the best instructional material is our life. Yes, it's our attitude. Yes. The way we relate, the way we do things. May the Lord bless us in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Daddy, what would you like to add to what yes. our mommy has just said? Uh, uh, how we can carry 
the principle of the Bible to the marketplace. Yes, Just as she has said, uh, there are um, various forms, various ways by which a Christian is expected to, to display the principle of God in the marketplace. We must remember that those principles are the stand of God. Mm. They the are not of God. God. They are not optional. Mm. They are not optional. And so, and we are to defend those stand. We are to manifest them. As a child of God in the market, just like you know, there are different kinds of people in the market. Mm -hmm. There are people who are coming to buy. Mm -hmm. There are others who are coming to sell. Yeah. If and there are some that just come to, just to, to come look and spy and to go back home. <laughs> and so there are, and so we, so we must position ourselves in such a way that we must give direction. Mm. And what everything we are doing, either to buy or to sell, we must advertise Christ. Mm. They are not optional, they are the stand of God. If you belong to the group of those who are coming to sell, who have shops or whatever in the marketplace, or who has a company or industry, we must be able to know that uh, everything we have belongs to God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whatever we have achieved in the market belongs to God. And in, from that angle, we must not see others who are not making it as a mistake mm -hmm. or as a as unfortunate. unfortunate. Whatever God has done for us is by grace, and so we must use our uh, we must uh, look at our life to encourage others. We must build others. He said, "Let those who are standing raise up those who are falling." So we have an assignment in the market mm. to direct people to Christ, not to ourselves. Mm. Mm. And again, carrying principle of the Bible to the market. You see, the evidence has shown us today that people are selling in the market. Some people are displaying a lot of, a lot of corrupt practices are going on in the market. And as a child of God, we must not partake in those ones. Corrupt practices, cheating, lying, uh, falsehood, and then several others, we must not partake in them. Thank you very much, uh, our daddy and our mommy. You have contributed so well today. I will pray that the Lord will continually increase your wisdom. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And also, we need to let us know that uh, when we are saying, when we are saying marketplace, we are not just talking about the market where yes. people go out to buy or sell. It could be our offices, yes. it could be our homes, our family, it could be anywhere, it could be anywhere. Anywhere we find ourselves is a marketplace. Even the church of God yes. is a marketplace. So may the Lord help us so that we will be able to carry out the assignments and the duties of Christ in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, in conclusion, conclusion, the Christian doctrine is such that is convincing and it is worthy of acceptance by all people. This is the major reason why God says that we should go out to teach and change, convert people, by the power of his words. It is pertinent to note that the world today is in a serious stage of confusion and it, if, and it is we Christians alone that have the answer to its remolding. As we go out to demonstrate to people outside, let us remember that our character should be worthy of emulation. Memory verse. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. And it says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son 
and of the Holy Spirit. I will pray that the Lord will continue to teach us his word and he'll continue to enable us to do the right thing anywhere we find ourselves in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Once again, I want to appreciate our discussions today. Uh, at my left hand side, I have our mommy, Mrs. Olanike Oke. Olanike Oke. Mm -hmm. God bless you, mommy. Thank, mm -hmm. thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. And our daddy, uh, the Reverend Canon Adeyemo Adeyera. Mm -hmm. Daddy, you are most welcome. Yes. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And my own name is Reverend Peter Uluwatomiwa Ola Oye. Let us pray. Our Lord in heaven, we thank you very much for the little time we are spending in your presence to discuss your word. A very important word that has to do with the mandate of God given to everyone as a Christian to go out and preach the good news. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. And we pray, O oh God, that as many that have heard your word, we pray that you will give us the grace, the courage, the power not to fail in this assignment in the name of Jesus. We pray, O oh God, that everything that we need mm -hmm. to succeed in this assignment, to follow this mandate, you will grant unto us in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will make us a faithful doer of your word Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord, because you know your first. For in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, and God bless you.